Way back in book one of Animorphs, five teens were given the power to morph. So this is the power to turn into any animal that they touch. The way that they got this magic power is through a sci-fi blue box, which was given to them by some kind aliens. However, after book one, this box goes missing until book 20. And this is where the Animorph series really shakes up and graduates from just a children's series with some dark themes into a series with seriously mature exploration of what war does to people. So the main war in this series is against the Yurks. The Yurks are another alien species. They are little slugs that crawl into your brain and take control of it. The Yurks are very interested also in finding the blue morphing box, which is where the David Trilogy comes in. So this David Trilogy is books 21 through 22 of the Animorph series, and it is so called because there is a main character in here named David. David finds the blue box. And the Yurks tear David's life apart, trying to get at it. So the Animorphs recruit David. But that quickly falls apart as they realize that David is a total psychopath. The way that David shakes up the team is super interesting, and it really reveals who these team players really are. Because the three books in this David trilogy are narrated by Marco, Jake, and Rachel. And David works as a foil, as a propellant to all of these characters. So Marco is the big jokester of the Animorph team. However, he was also the person at the very beginning of the series that didn't want to be an Animorph. He was like, well guys, I just want to be with my dad. He's still trying to get over the death of my mom. Like, life is rough. I don't want to make it rougher for myself. And he eventually found a way to be motivated to fight in this war. And David really acts as like a reflection of Marco because David in the beginning also doesn't want to be an Animorph very much. Like he finds, you know, the morphing is cool, whatever, but he doesn't want to go out and save the world. He's not motivated by that. Like Marco wasn't motivated by that in the beginning. So even just seeing the contrast of David in the beginning and Marco in the beginning and Marco as he is now with David as he is now, is super interesting because you can see the way that their paths diverged, that Marco found a reason to fight in this war and David did not. And I think as Marco sees that resonance of himself in David, it really freaks him out because he knows that David is kind of a bad guy psychopath, but because he sees something of himself in that psychopath David, it scares him. And it scares him so much that there's this beautiful confrontation between them where Marco is explaining to David how much his life has fallen apart. He's like, yo, those evil aliens, they've taken your parents, they've taken everything. Listen to me. By now, your parents have been taken to a secret underground facility called a yerk pool. It's not a nice place. Picture a sludgy cesspool of a pond the color of molten lead. There are two steel piers leading out over the pond. hork warriors will drag your parents to the end of those piers. They will... Marco, Cassie said angrily. They will drag them out to the end of that pier and they will kick their legs out from under them and force their heads down into the sludge. And while they are kicking and screaming and calling for help, a yerk slug will swim over and it will squeeze into one ear and it will flatten itself out and squeeze and burrow and dig its way into their skulls where it will spread around and into their brains. And then the hork will yank them out of the sludge and they will start to feel that they cannot control their own arms or legs, cannot open their ma own mouths or move their own eyes. The Yurk will open their memories like a person opening a book. They will be slaves, the most total slaves in all the history, all of history, because even their own minds won't be theirs anymore. Are you getting the picture? Throughout all of this, David had just stared at me, but slowly, without me noticing at first, tears had begun to well up in his eyes, and now I jerked myself away. I was panting, feeling like I could see it all happening in my imagination. And as I'd been talking, it wasn't David's mother I was seeing. It was my own. You know, a fun book for kids. But I think this kind of reflects what Animorphs is. The Animorphs isn't afraid to pull its thematic punches. That it doesn't talk down to the kids and screen out this horror of war and of loss and of Marco trying to deal with all of this. Marco has already lost his mom. 
to the Yerks, and you can tell that his greatest fear is to lose his dad as well. Marco is so protective of his dad, and what he sees in David's life is what he fears most will happen to his own life, and he takes that out on David. So next, we have Jake. Jake is the leader of the Animorphs, but he never really has to pull rank. Like, he's just the unofficial leader. He kind of facilitates team meetings, but before this point, he's rarely just made a decision for the team. He's kind of just the facilitator. But in this book, he really steps up and he has to start handing out orders. And part of that is because David challenges him. Jake is stressed out of his mind in this book because there's so many things that the Yerks are doing and he feels like because he's the leader, everything's on him. That if they can't succeed, Earth dies. Earth loses to the Yerks. And if Jake fully accepts his mantle as leader, that means that if the Animorphs fail, it is because Jake failed. Because he's responsible for the Animorphs. So you can see that Jake is kind of cringing away from his role as leader. But because David is rebelling against his leadership, he also has to step up and pull the leadership card. There's this beautiful confrontation between them where David is asking Jake like, well, what are you gonna do with me? I can't go home, my parents are taken by the aliens. And Jake says, I, look, we can only handle so many things at once, okay? Right now, the leaders of the most powerful nations on earth are being targeted by the Yerks. I feel the clock ticking. I know your life sucks, okay? But I can't figure that out right now, later, after this mission is over. David gave me a look that was pure cynicism. Yeah, right. Well, how about this, Jake? I'll handle my life. You be the big boss of the Animorphs, and I'll take care of me. An answer to David's challenge had formed in my mind. The words were right there, but they were harsh. And if I spoke them, I'd cross a line with David. A line I might not be able to uncross. It's like school and home, okay? David continued. It's like being an Animorph at school, and you're the teacher or principal or whatever. But then, after I go home, you don't tell me what to do anymore. I shook my head. No. That's not what it's like, David. I don't want to come down on you, but the way it, it is, is like this. You want to go around using your powers in selfish ways, then we can't have you around. You're just a danger to us, and you're against what we stand for. His eyes widened. He rolled off the bed and stood up. Are you threatening me? No, just telling you the way it is. We're the only family you have now, David. The only people you can trust. The only people who can help you. We are all you have. Deal with it. He shot me a sullen, resentful look. I couldn't blame him. I sounded like someone's father saying, as long as you live in my house, you'll follow my rules. I sounded like I was threatening him. I was. Let's go, I said. We went. So you can see through David challenging Jake's authority, Jake has to insist on his authority. And every time that Jake insists on his authority as the leader of the Animorphs, Jake just gets more stressed out about being the leader of the Animorphs because he's realizing that if he's the leader, everything is really resting on his shoulders. And that is where Jake both shines and breaks. So last in the David trilogy, we have a book narrated by Rachel. And Rachel is probably the one who is most challenged by David because Rachel is the one of the Animorphs who really enjoys fighting. She loves the, the adrenaline rush. She loves being fierce and kicking it to the Yerks. But you know who else loves that? David. David also loves fighting. And David loves it in such an evil, psychopathic way that he's willing to go to such lengths as actual murder. And seeing with Rachel, she's not very big into introspection, but as she sees like her foil here in David that she likes to fight, David likes to fight. David's a monster. Am I a monster? Rachel has to ask over and over in this book. And one of her big struggles is that she knows that the other Animorphs, especially Jake, know that she's like this. That Jake sees her and Jake knows that Rachel loves fighting. Jake knows that if he needs to call on someone to go fight dirty and fight hard, he'll call Rachel. And that's what Jake does in these books, that when they need someone to threaten David, he has Rachel do it. And then later, Rachel confronts Jake about this. 
What did you expect me to do to David? Did you think I was going to kill him? Did you? Is that why you, you let me go after him? Is that why you sent Axe for me? Because you think I'm some kind of violent nut you can call in whenever you need some dirty work done? Look, Rachel, every one of us has his strengths and his weaknesses. And my strength is being some kind of crazy killer? I practically shrieked. I didn't say that. You did it not say it! Okay, fine, Rachel, you want to do this? Fine. I think you're the bravest member of the group. I think in a bad fight, I'd rather have you with me than anyone else. But yeah, Rachel, I, I think there's something pretty dark down inside you. I think you're the only one of us who would be disappointed if this all ended tomorrow. Cassie hates all this. Marco has personal reasons for being in this war. Axe just wants to go home and fight the Eriks with his own people. Tobias? Who knows what Tobias wants anymore? But you, Rachel, you love it. It's what makes you so brave. It's what makes you so dangerous to the Yerks. I worry about you, Rachel, more than any of the others except Tobias. I feel like this war is to you like booze is to an alcoholic. Like, I don't know what will happen to you if it all ends someday. What are you going to do? Go back to being the world's greatest shopper? Go back to gymnastics and getting good grades? I laughed harshly. You worry about me? What do you think you're going to do? Jake, you're a leader now. You make life and death decisions all the time. You've learned to do that. And I added bitterly, you've learned to use people. You use them for their strengths and their weaknesses. Worry about me? Like when all this is over, you'll go back to being a mediocre basketball player and a decent student? So here we see another big theme of the David trilogy, which is beginnings and endings that you can see in David beginning his journey as an Animorph, reflections of Marco's beginning as an Animorph. And David is also asking, hey, where's the end for me? Jake doesn't know. And Jake asks, hey, where's the end for you, Rachel? And Rachel asks, hey, what's the end for you, Jake? That they're all asking themselves, wait a minute, what's after this war? What happens when we've defeated the Yerks or when we've completely lost to the Yerks? Because by seeing this contrast of before and after they became Animorphs, these teens have changed so much that even if the war ended, they couldn't go back to their regular lives because they're, not, they're no longer the people who fit in those lives. I think the best, best moment in these, this David trilogy is between Rachel and Jake. That right after they've had this confrontation where they've said such terrible things to each other, it ends like this. I have no idea what I did, what happened next, because I'm not really that kind of person, but I hugged Jake, and he hugged me back. And then he whispered in my ear, okay, now let's figure out how to take this creep down. You know it, cousin, I said. And it's just those little moments of connection that even though they've grown so far apart from the people they were at the beginning of the series, all the Animorphs have grown closer together because of the events of the series. So, in conclusion, Animorph series is fantastic. I love it so much. These books don't pull their punches. They are fierce and lovely and so beautiful.